In this video we are checking out the very beautiful and very thick new rulebook for Warhammer 40,000 9th edition. Welcome to Winter Disco Tabletop Gaming where we look at everything Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigma, Dungeons and Dragons and a whole bunch more. So this is the first book, or well, the first, second video in the Indominus unboxing series where I'm looking at it. Everything in the Indominus box set and we have the rulebook. It is a chunky boy. It is a big boy. And I've brought over the uh, 8th edition rulebook so we can compare the two. And you can see it is a lot thicker. Um, it's actually a lot bigger. So if we compare here, you get a little bit more. So this rulebook is the one that is in the Indominus box set, of course. Um, you do, you can get this rulebook separately. It has a slightly different cover. Still the same art, but it has some more graphics on it and probably some things on the back, which this one does not have, which is fine. So you can see here, I don't want to break it too much. It's finally just got it. Uh, we do have this art with Abaddon versus Rabute Gilliman with a lot of stuff going on in the background. I love it. I do love this art, it's very nice. So this video is gonna be a casual flip through, really. I feel like doing a chilled out video for this. I'm not really gonna go into too much of the rules. Um, we may do some other videos for that, but we're just gonna have a look through. So, obviously this is Warhammer 40,000, so there's gonna be thousands of screaming faces up front. And as always, we have this. Uh, this text is ancient. It's been there since, I'm pretty sure it was in Rogue Trader in 80 something. I can't remember exactly what year that book came out, which was like first edition Warhammer 40,000. but. We have that, we have this art as well for the Emperor, slightly different. This, I don't think this is the John Blanche art. The face looks slightly different. I have to, I don't know, I think it's different, but iconic, this text, I'm not gonna read it out. You should know it if you're into 40K because it's in every rule book, in pretty much every book. Contents, um, standard contents. As this is a rule book for 40K, there is a ton of background material. And I do apologize for the trains in the background if you can hear them. Hopefully the mic isn't picking them up too much, but it's gonna happen in this. Yeah, so this is a rule book, so there's gonna be a whole bunch of things about the Dark Imperium, about where the storyline is at the moment, um, about the humanity itself, the woes of the Emperor, which is like the good guys, if you can say good guys, um, the bad guys, Xenos, and then rule books. The rule book, which is makes up a fair chunk of it. Let's get through. So Normally, if you're familiar with the 40k rulebooks, they start off with uh, sort of about the hobby itself, which is all about little toy soldiers, and it shows off a whole bunch of the new models in that corner there, which is nice. And again, what you're going to get in the box set, which is pretty nice. So there's a lot of pages I'm not going to spend too much time on. And it goes through, it's still about some of the hobby, and then how to play, well, not how to play, but you know, what the whole thing is about. Then we go into um, the Dark Imperium. Now, I'm not gonna be able to show all of this image, um, but this is a double, oh God, I'm gonna make some room here. I didn't plan this. I knew this page was in here, so I didn't really think about it too much. Um, basically, we have a map of Sol, which is our solar system with um, Holy Terror at the front there. Front and center always. Then we have a map of the current state of play we have the Imperium Sanctus on one side, the um, Cicatrix Maledictum, which is the big tearing of the galaxy in half, and then Imperium Nihilus, which is dark. No one knows what's going on there. It's, it's bad news on that side. And that's sort of where we are at the moment. There is another location in here. I don't exactly know where it is, but it's where this... Um, campaign, well the box set is set, I can't actually see it on here, I don't actually know where it is, but it is the um, Prior Nexus, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, and it's where the Necrons are coming back, and I can't see it on here, so I'm not sure exactly where that is, but that's a very important part of the world, and the other bit just has about different information about the different locations, and as this is a 40k book, I'll probably say this a lot, um, there is just some beautiful, dark, depressing art, which for me is 40k. 
crap like this. This is 40k to me. Just weird baby faces. I don't know if you can see that with the glare, but yeah, just weird baby faces on machines and skulls. It's weird. Um, so yeah, the Imperium Sanctus, which is the half they know, and then the Imperium Nihilus, or Nihilus, depends how you want to pronounce it, which is the side that's in hell. So, Emperor Mankind. We don't, we don't need to go through all of this, but I'm really just doing this for the art, to be honest. Because with new edition and new rulebook, there is always new art. And it looks really, really cool. This is really cool. I'm pretty sure that is not the Iron Throne. I'm pretty sure the Iron Throne is all the way up there. The Iron Throne? My god. <laughs> the Golden Throne. Oh, it's been a long morning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could do just look at the art forever. So we have Space Marines, and this is what I'm really excited about. Space Marines going back to Grim Dark with chainsaws and skulls and just crap everywhere. Looking a bit more unpolished, more Grim Dark than what it was previously. With the new Primaris, I mean, not old Space Marines. Things like that. So we go through a whole bunch of the good guys. I mean, relatively speaking, good guys are good guys. This is an art they teased early on, and there is a lot of stuff in here which I hope they start going into. Like these creepy boys here with the the round heads. Just there's some really cool stuff that I'm hoping they do expand upon. I do love the Imperium and chaos but I want them to go into the uh, seedy mm, grim dark because that's it's all really creepy and I love it I love it I hope it's a direction they do go and we got some more here lots of uh, witches and heretics and unsanctioned psychers and some looks like some renegade soldiers there I do love that I am hoping for um, trainer guard to come out I think that would be amazing and then we have the gods creepy gods I want these cards whoops knocked the microphone sorry about that I want these cards I I think they should just release just these cards as big prints I love it so yeah of course the four dark gods so here we go into the storyline Saga Imperialis with some very very nice art I do like it the history of mankind which if you are up on the lore you would know the story, but everything was cool, and then it was not. That's basically the story. <laughs> and it all really comes down to the god Slanesh being born out of the Eldar or the Eldari. And lots of creepy skulls everywhere, all over. I love it. I love what they do. So we got some tech priests there with some titans, some knights. I think it's actually a knight, not a titan. But it's very nice. And then the Age of Strife. You know what? One day, I'm, I know this is not going to happen, and I think I've mentioned it in one an early video on this channel. I hope that they bring in a game set in the Age of Strife. I think there could be some really, really cool stuff. Let me go through the Age of Darkness, and then a bit of story there. In the Age of the Imperium, which is up to about M36, M40. So from like the Horus Heresy, which is Millennium. 32 up until about 41 which is Asian Imperium and then we go into all these aliens started turning out like the Tyranids creepy creepy Tyranids some more lore and some art bit of chaos information some more, some more lore so one of the big things I love about these books is the fact that it has a whole bunch of backstory and a whole bunch of lore and stories and just sort of sets where we're at like with 8th edition, they really pushed forward the Cicatrix Maledictum and how the uh, galaxy was torn asunder and broken in half. And that was really cool. And this one, I'm not sure really what this main um, storyline is. Looks like it's going to be the Necrons rising up, so hopefully we're seeing a lot more Xenos this edition. We've got some chaos going on. Poor guardsmen down here getting overwhelmed as they do. Dark Age, the Age of the Dark Imperium, which is basically the storyline now. Oh, I love it. So, <laughs> I'm really thinking of going Blood Angels this edition for a little bit because I want to go with all the. I love the Blood Angels banners. 
I don't particularly care about the wings and the, the blood drops and all the gold trim and everything, but banners, I want to go just some crazy banners. I think going that way would be really nice. So then we have the Indominus Crusade, which is really where um, 8th edition started, which was Gilliman coming back and releasing all the new Primaris, well, the old Primaris, they've been in stasis for essentially 10,000 years, waiting, which yes, weird story, and it just like was forced into the story, but that's fine. It's okay. And then we are, that's right, so then we had the Psychic Awakening, which was all witches coming back and a whole bunch of weird stuff happening with the warp and psychers and things. So yeah, so they're saying Age of Witches. Um, the other name they're saying is Era Indomitus, which is sort of where the story is now. So the Indomitus Crusades are somewhat over, I guess. I'm not too sure on that. I think they're still going, but yeah, we're in the Age Indomitus and it seems things are, as usual, humanity is on the edge. It is for the last 10,000 years it's been on the edge and it seems more and more getting on the edge it won't take much so then we go in through two armies of the Imperium with Space Marines of course we don't really need to go too much in the Space Marines we know Space Marines um, nothing really new here these are all images and chapters from 8th edition throughout all the different Space Marine books because there's a ton of them so nothing really that interesting there. Well, I mean, it is interesting, but nothing new. Death Watch, Grey Knights. So more Space Marine chapters. Then the Adeptor Sororitas, Sitters of Battle, which had a big release in 8th, which is towards the end, which is always good. And this is the new Warzone, which is the Warzone prior. So we can see it is sort of near some bit of the Cicatrix Maledictum in Ultimus Ultimus Segmentum and then Tempestus, sort of around that area. I don't know exactly where on the map. I think that's more in the Edge, uh, edge of Silence book, which we'll have a look at as well. So the Custodies, classic Imperial Guard artwork, um, or Astra Militarum, if you want to call it. The heroes of the Imperium, really, let's be honest. And the Daptus Mechanicus. So, as usual, we've got different armies here. Then we've got some more art. So now we've got the showcase. So there's a lot of showcase in here. Now, there is a game you can play in this book. Spot the old classic Space Marine model. I believe there's only four images of them in here. Um, so we're gonna have a look out for that. But these are all the new models that you get in the box set. And they're just, they are beautiful. Let's just bring that up a bit closer like that classic chaplain, which is, I'm glad they did this because the old chaplain for the Primaris, really, I, it's not a chaplain. So I'm, this is the, probably the model I'm most excited about. I thought I was excited about the um, captain and the blade guard veterans, but no, it's the chaplain. So we go through some more various different armies, but it's all Space Marines because, you know, this is 40k, this. <laughs> space Marines is where they make their money and they sell them. They sell, sell, sell. So, we have some classic Space Marines there. That's one. Now, I don't know where the other ones are. I knew about that image, because I'd seen that one. I don't remember the other ones, though. Then we have the Adeptus Sororitas, the Sisters of Battle. And the Custodes. I'd like to see the Custodes get a few more models. I don't think they really should be an army, to be honest, but you know, just my opinion. We have the marker there, and we have the Astra Militarum, the heroes, glorious, glorious heroes. Hopefully we do get some new models. I really want some new models for those troops because they're very outdated and we need some variations. So Adaptus Mechanicus, knights, glorious knights. I love knights, particularly the tiny knights for Adaptus Titanicus. So Lost and the Damned, bad guys. <clears throat> so of course forces of chaos um, so this, you know the story space marines turned against the emperor because of chaos and then they've been fighting their battles so that's what they do and I'm very interested in renegade studies I find that actually very interesting 
because they're not always so much bad guys. They could be fighting against something specifically in the Imperium itself. So it's always a bit of nuance because really in 40k there is no good guys. Everyone's a bad guy. So then we go into the beautifully sexy Death Guard. I love those models so good. Thousand Suns and then Chaos Demons, Chaos Knights and then more, more stuff. Then we've got Model Showcase. So we'll go run through this pretty quickly. Montarian, love that model. Um, some more Thousand Suns, some Demons. And then we've got the Chaos Knights. So Xenos Invaders, wow, we're not even halfway through the book yet. <laughs> we're already been going for about 17 minutes, but that's fine. So the Aldari or the Elder or the Space Elves, depends what you want to call them. So yeah, we'll go through a lot. I'm going to skip through, start getting through here. So the Necrons, um, that has a full, almost a full range refresh, to be honest. I think there's a few more models that they haven't announced, but we'll get some announcements soon. Orcs, always love the Orcs. I do have a little bit of an Orc army that I have not put together, a bit sad. Um, then we have the Tau. We'll skip over the Tau. No one likes Tau. Um, Tyranids, and if you do like Tau, I'm sorry. Um, Gene Steeler Colts, which I do like. And we've got some art, not art, but some models. You know, usual. I always want to stop on the Orcs because I love Orcs. I think it should be a rule if... I think it should be a rule you have to kit bash every bit of Orc vehicle. <laughs> because it's an Orc, they don't have set vehicles. You should kit bash all of them. Um, so more Tyranids, Gene Steeler Colts, lots of models. So the rules. Now, if you want to see me go over a rule, the rules and do like a bit of a how to play, let me know in the comments. Um, because that's, I do want to do that. But to be honest, I'm not a big player myself, so I'm not going to go through the rules too much. I will skip through some. What I will say, let's find a cool page, let's go back a bit. So the rules are laid out in a very, very nice way. I think is a great way to do it. So let's go one set of rules like unit coherency. It goes through in detail, in text, how it works, but then it has the dot points and how it actually works. So you can quickly just go to that page and be like, okay, so unit coherency needs to be within two inches horizontally. Okay, that's fine. That's all I need to know. That's it. And I do like how they've set that up. So the rules do a lot of this and then like the battle round. So it's really good, um, well laid out rule set but we're gonna skip through all of them. So yeah, I mean, can we get a unit of these, <laughs> these guys for the Imperial Guard? Not so much the helmet, but everything else. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, so we we'll skip through. So missions, so there's only a few missions in here, um, as far as I'm aware. Someone's personal army, very nice, very metallic, dark elder. And then like how to build armies and how the detachments work. Another one, just keep skipping through. And then it starts to go into like more um, advanced rules. So one of the sections that he'd want to feature on was the terrain features. So this is a massive change from 8th edition where there really wasn't terrain. There was things that were there and had an effect, but it was like, I'm going to have to walk around. I can see through it or I can't see through it. That was pretty much it. Very simple. But this is going into a lot more detail. So even here you have the traits, but what I want to skip to is here. So all of this terrain has slightly different rules. We can also see some two bits there. Cheeky new terrain. And that looks like new terrain too. I'm excited. I'm assuming this is going to be announced very soon. So pretty excited about that. Always love some new terrain. So they've listed uh, nine bits of different terrain here, and they're all slightly different, where previously they would have been treated the same, or not at all. It just would have been, oh, here's a thing in the way, like number six here, which is uh, debris, that's no, just there. But now it's an obstacle, and it's an exposed position. So you get all these different traits and categories there. So like you have ruins, which is these ones here, but then you have ruined walls, which are different. So the ruins is an area terrain, as the category, but it's um, scalable, breachable, has light cover, defensible, and obscuring. 
So it has all these different traits, which if you go back to here, you can see there's some traits, traits here. I think there's a few more. Oh no, there's one. I thought there was a few more than that. Um, but they have the different categories, traits. So you can go, oh, I have this really unique bit of terrain. Um, we actually now have rules for it. You might have something that is super high, can only be scalable, but you know, I, I think that is such a good way at also think it is useful when you're working with smaller models um, and this goes into my conspiracy theory about inquisition coming back I think we'll come back and I think this is very useful when it comes to that because you could treat normally you could have treated the pipes um, the debris and the ruins pretty much exactly the same in 8th edition but now they're completely different things which I think is a great step forward. So that is probably one of the biggest changes in the game. So then we have some example battlefields. And because all the terrain is treated differently now, it has a massive effect on the game. When normally, this section over here, which I don't think you can really see it, that all would have just probably been ignored previously. Now it actually has an effect on the game, which is really, really cool. I like it. And some more... Um, different setups and it has the way you set up obviously has a huge effect on how it's played and they're actually using the uh, new boards which I do have laying around somewhere I actually bought them too and it really fits on the table so it's good so then we have the um, open rules so this is more just playing a game so it's more rules different missions and then open play match play which is the more official and we also have the uh, grand tournament rule book as well which I may show off another video. Um, one thing that I really do like is you have, just reading through, you have the main missions. So if I bring up a mission thing here, you have, um, let's sit on this one here. So Outriders, you have the primary objectives and then you have the secondary objectives because you get to choose the different objectives based on your army and then based on the opponent's army and what the, um, the actual uh, mission is. And I think that's really cool. So we're going to go through, skip through these. So there are a lot, <laughs> which is kind of cool. And you can use these maps to play for other games as well. So narrative play, which is always fun. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on Crusade system. I think it's it's a light system for narrative play. Um, I think it's going to be actually really good. It's one thing that's actually getting me back into playing. Because I really haven't, didn't play 8th edition. I wanted to, but I was like, ugh. I just want to collect the models this time, but this time around, I'm going to, because Crusade, you can start small and build up and your units get better, they get worse. Um, they've all, one of the rules is it has to have names, which is kind of cool. Um, and then you can choose all different types of things. There's like a post game thing. So you can give them traits and they level up with experience levels and things like that. But I'm not going to go through too much into that. That is a whole video just on itself. So, um, these are all the missions for the Crusade system. So, we'll skip through these. And that is pretty much the book. So there's tons of missions. Um, rule Appendix and the whole Blast Weapon, which is a big change to the rules. And then we have Rare Rules and things like that. So, things that won't come up. And a Glossary, which is always good to have. And then a little bit more art. Oh, I love it. I love the um, Ecclesiarchy models. They really need to do more. Um, a range just for that, I think that'd be really cool. And that is it. That is the 9th edition rulebook from the Indomitus Crusade. So in the comments below, let me know what you're most excited about. For me, it is the uh, Crusade rules and the new terrain rules. It adds this another layer of complexity to the game, which I really do like. So if you have enjoyed this video, please leave me a subscribe and a like, also hit that bell button. And I will see you next time in the next video. Thank you for watching.